What is earnest money? I get this question all of the time. What is it? How much is it? When is it due? What if I don't end up buying the house? Do I get my earnest money back? In today's video, I'm gonna go through all of these questions and I'm also gonna go through the seven ways that a buyer can get their earnest money back if they decide not to buy the house. If you've got any questions about earnest money, then this is the video for you, so stick around. Hey everyone, this is Danae Hewitt, your go-to DFW Realtor with Brico Realty Services. I'm here to tell you all the things real estate here in DFW. So let's get started. What is earnest money? Think of it as good faith money. The buyer wants to purchase the seller's home. And once they are under contract, that buyer is going to give earnest money that they plan to buy the home in good faith. So you're basically putting a small deposit on buying the home. Here in Texas, that earnest money is due three days after the contract has been signed by both parties. That is three business days. If that third day falls on a Saturday, a Sunday, or a holiday, then it is due the next business day that is not a Saturday, a Sunday, or a holiday. How much is earnest money? Typically here, that is about 1% of the offer price that you have put forward on a home. Let's say you're purchasing the home for $400,000. 1% of that is $4,000. That is due to the title company. Now, how does the money get to the title company? Well, there's a couple different ways. A check can be written and FedExed to them, or you can also wire funds from your bank into the title company's account. I do want to strongly, strongly advise that you absolutely check the title company's banking info and routing info before you wire any funds into their account. Wire fraud is rampant here in the US and you want to do everything you can to ensure that you're not wiring money to a fake account. Is the title company is going to email you the wiring instructions. This is what you do first. You call the title company to verify the numbers that they have sent you. Speak with a live person and say, hey, I'd like to wire some money to the account. I just wanna make sure I've got the correct numbers before I do so. They do this all of the time. They definitely know the reason why you're calling to make sure that that money is being sent to the right account. Before you wire funds, call to make sure that you're wiring them to the correct account so you don't lose your money. I do get asked this a lot. Does the earnest money count towards the down payment on my house? And that answer is yes. Think of it as a pre down payment on your home. If you plan to put $50,000 down on the property and you've already put 5,000 down, then of course you're bringing $5,000 less to the closing table because that's already your earnest money that you've put forth. And if you haven't gathered already by now, that earnest money does need to be cash that is in your account. You do have to have this money up front when you plan to purchase the home. Again, you're going to wire the funds and that cash is immediately deducted from your account and put into the title company's account or you're writing a check. Some title companies accept personal checks. If they do, that is going to be deposited or you can write a cashier's check. But just so you know, this earnest money does need to be funds that you have in your account when you put an offer in on the property. Let's talk about the seven ways that you as the buyer can get your earnest money back if you decide not to buy the home. The first way is if you terminate the contract during your option period or also known as your due diligence period. That first few days of the contract is anywhere from, I've seen it be from three to 10 days, that option period can last, which is all negotiable. During that time, you as the buyer are gonna do your due diligence on the property. 
you're going to have your inspectors come in, you're going to have the roofer come in, electrical come in, whoever you need to come into the house to make sure that your investment is going to be a solid and safe and secure investment. If during this time you decide this isn't the house for you for whatever reason, you as the buyer can terminate the contract. If you do, then your earnest money is refunded back to you. The second way that you can also get your earnest money back if you don't buy the house is if you can't get your loan approved by the bank. Here in Texas, we have a addendum to the contract, which is our third party financing addendum. In there, you state how many days it is going to take your lender to give you final official approval to buy the home. And I've seen that be anywhere from 10 days up to 25 days. Again, it just depends on your lender. If for some reason something has happened and you are not able to get final approval for your loan, then you do have that out out of the contract and you would get your earnest money back. On the flip side, if you can't get that loan approval and you are outside of that X number of approval days, then the seller might be entitled to keep your earnest money if you don't exit the contract for any other reasons. The third way to get your earnest money back is if the appraisal comes in lower than what the contract has been agreed upon. Ugh, it's always so terrible when this happens. Well, let's say that you are under contract to buy the home for $400,000, but the appraiser says that the home is only worth $390,000, and they have to justify that with other comparables in the area. Well, the bank is only going to give you money for $390,000. They're not gonna give it to you for 400 because the bank is saying it's not worth 400. What happens with that $10,000? A couple things can happen. The sellers can agree to reduce the price of the home to 390, or you as the buyer, if you happen to have an extra $10,000 and want to pay more than the appraised value of the home, then you can pay that additional $10,000 to make up that difference. Well, let's say the seller is not gonna reduce that price down to 390. They're gonna put their house back on the market and hope that another appraiser says something else. And let's say you don't have that additional $10,000. Well, then the contract will need to be terminated. And if so, you as the buyer would get your earnest money back. The fourth reason you might get your earnest money back is if you are under contract to purchase this home contingent that you sell your current home and that home doesn't sell, then you would get your earnest money back because you are submitting an offer contingent that this home sells. And if it doesn't, well, then unfortunately you're gonna have to terminate the contract on the house that you're buying, but you would get your earnest money back. The fifth way that a buyer can retain their earnest money is if something crazy shows up on the title commitment you have a couple of days to object to anything on that title commitment. And that couple of days is all negotiable and should be agreed upon upfront before the title commitment has been delivered. Now, when I say crazy, I mean that there is, that there may be a lien on the property that the seller may not know about and maybe doesn't plan to take care of when they sell the house. That's not ever good or maybe the sellers don't have a right to sell that property. Maybe it's a family member's home that they're planning to sell. Well, they can't sell it if they're not on that title. So again, when I say crazy, you kind of just never know. Each house is very different, but if there is something on that commitment that you object to, then you can terminate the contract within those X number of days and your earnest money would be refunded to you. We are getting to the end of our list. The sixth way that a buyer can retain their earnest money is if during the final walkthrough, you go through the home with your agent and some of the repairs that you had agreed upon that the seller would fix weren't actually fixed. You can then terminate the contract and get your earnest money back. Now, I don't say let's jump to termination, go back to the sellers and say, hey, this wasn't done correctly and it was on our repair amendment to fix. It could have been a, a mistake, it 
could have been a slight oversight. I mean, who knows? But if for some reason that seller says, well, I'm just, you know, too bad, I'm not going to sell, I hope that doesn't happen. Well, then you can terminate because those repairs were not done per a previous agreement. And if that happens, then you would get your earnest money back. The seventh way that a buyer can retain their earnest money, and I hope that this one never happens, is if the sellers wake up one day and then they just decide not to sell the house and they don't show up to the closing table and they don't sign those documents, then you would definitely get your earnest money back because that should not happen. They should not do that. They are in a legally binding contract to sell the property. But if they decide not to for whatever reason, you are entitled to that money. There are other ways that you can terminate the contract and get your earnest money, but these are the top seven. If you've got any questions, ask your real estate agent that you're working with so that you know how protected that money is. If you have any more questions about the home buying process and all that it entails, check out this video here. Thanks so much for tuning in guys, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Have a good one.